September, October, November, and December are my four favorite months out of the year. September because it's the start of the fall and my birthday. October because... <laughs> November because it's that time of year for me when the hoodies come out without being so cold that I have to wear extra jackets over top my own clothes. And December because of, well, a few obvious reasons. One of which being school is out and I get a break from classes. So I can do more work. But hey, at least this work doesn't make me feel completely dead inside. <laughs> also, it's not like I don't love what I do, just something about most art class assignments just kind of kill my creativity just because of how much time they consume. But one thing that I love to do that distracts me from my work is the excitement of Christmas. Also, hi everyone. I'm Anime Christie, and today I'm going to be sharing some of my Christmas stories. You know, feel free to leave your holiday-related stories in the comments below, whether you celebrate Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or National Bacon Day. You know, just feel free to share some warm memories if you want. I love reading the comments from everyone. With 2020 about to end, I think some of us need to remember some good happy times since this year has been pretty trashy. This is just one of those videos that sometimes you just need to pull up a chair, drink some hot cocoa, and just be wearing a warm fluffy sweater. And before I begin, for those of you actually watching the video, this speed draw is the result of one of my latest polls here on the community section of my channel, and was partially inspired by drawing with Waffle's Peppermint Bark Princess, which is friggin' gorgeous, by the way. I hope you enjoy how it came out. This is the first full drawing I've been able to complete since my winter break began a few days ago, and I'm pretty proud of the results. It's kind of strange how becoming an adult can really change your perspective. Man, when I was a kid, I remember wanting so much random stuff because I thought that Santa was somehow a god who could give me golden angel wings, an electric guitar, and maybe some friggin' ice queen powers. Uh, it never happened, but one of the cool things about being a kid was waking up to presents. You know, I asked my parents about how when I was a kid, how I was able to celebrate Christmas with a mountain of toys, but as an adult, I get like five to ten presents, maybe. And not that I'm complaining, but it just hit me one day that I had bomb-ass Christmases when I was a kid. The short answer was because, well, toys were cheap back in the late 90s, early 2000s. The long answer? Well, if we wanted something, we had to save up for it, because we were met with an immediate no if we asked for something before Christmas and or our birthday. I remember though, like from when I was younger during Christmas season, I used to get the following. Uh, I would get Barbies from the era of the classic CGI films from like 2001 up until like 2007 when I deemed myself too old to be enjoying Barbie. I used to get Pokemon cards in 2005. I got my first Game Boy Color along with a used copy of like Pokemon Gold and Silver. I mostly got like Pokemon related stuff and maybe like some board games or some Lisa Frank coloring books or even maybe some stuffed animals. And at some point, I think I was given one of those cheap 131 pieces of art sets. Uh, <laughs> the only bad gifts I could think of that I received as a kid were from my grandmother. Nona, I love you, but your gifts weren't that great. <laughs> and, and that sounds super ungrateful, but hear me out. My Nona was a Red Cross nurse who lived in many different parts of the world when I was a kid. She lived in Italy for 25 years, she was stationed in different parts of the Middle East, and you know, she lived in England for a while, and you know what? I love her, and I love her dearly, but not living around me during my early childhood kind of made her out of touch on what kids actually liked. These were some of Nona's very memorable presents. A creepy and depressing Italian clown porcelain doll. Lame yet expensive clothes that I probably never used because, uh, yeah, no, what kid would wear this stuff? Uh, seriously parents, don't ever make clothes a gift to your kids. Uh, more porcelain dolls that I couldn't play with and perhaps the most cruel thing of all, Disney princess porcelain dolls. They were really pretty, fancy and came with gorgeous little accessories, but I couldn't play with them and they were meant to stay in the box. Now, to a collector, that's an awesome gift, but to a kid who just wants to play with Ariel? Uh, yeah, that's just mean. 
it's kind of weird looking back on this time in my life sometimes because while I was happy with what I got back then, I'm actually pretty content with not getting gifts most of the time now because it's a shift in perspective on where my concerns lie in my life, but I've become the kind of person who's good with just getting like maybe $50 at most for groceries and calling it a day. But then again, spending all your money on art supplies for college can change somebody's perspective real quick. Now aside from presents, something about prepping for Christmas is just heartwarming and nostalgic for me. I remember when my mom and I were grocery shopping one day and remember that this was a time period when I was a dumb kid who didn't pay attention to pretty much anything and there was a Salvation Army donation station with a Santa ringing its bell, you know the drill, but uh, <laughs> instead of a bucket they had a Santa's boot and I wasn't paying attention at the time, and my mom looks down at me and hands me a dollar. Okay, Christine, go stick it in the boot. And I was super confused and started sticking it in my own boot. And my mother was shouting at me, No, no, not that one! I was just so confused and I didn't see the Salvation Army or the Santa, and it took me a minute to just process what was going on. I don't know, I may have been just like too preoccupied with myself at the time, but I did think, <laughs> I, I think of this story and I just find myself laughing for no reason over how ridiculous this situation was for an 8 year old me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I know everyone who celebrates Christmas at some point has probably had to sit on Santa's lap at a shopping mall or something. It just feels like before COVID, a modern Christmas tradition. I don't remember it, but my mom says I cried when I sat on Santa's lap at my local apple orchard where Santa was listening to, you know, what kids wanted for Christmas. We all know this, anyways. But I remember being at the orchard during, like, the Christmas season. It looked like a traditional Santa's workshop during that time, but I don't remember the crying part. Now, what I do remember was probably the scariest and probably the coolest thing that somebody like me saw when I was younger. Now, when I say that, oh, most people probably met Santa at a mall, right? I pretty much only say that because I, you know, the media I see on TV around Christmas usually features at least one mall Santa in some kind of, like, Christmas special or another. Um, The Simpsons, Christmas Story, chowder. <laughs> Somewhere there's always a shopping district with some equivalent to a mall Santa. What I've never seen and thought was a fever dream up until I looked it up again was a giant snowman named Archie. I don't remember much of this and I don't even think I remember how we got to the mall at this time but my parents were shopping around for a new refrigerator at the local Sears that was connected to our local mall. I guess my parents picked a good day to go because while we were walking around after the fact, I was met with the giant snowman named Archie. I was a small little bean who remembers him to be the size of the Stay Puffed Men from the Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> like, the giant version. That's just how my imagination saw him. I ended up calling my parents to see if this thing was a fever dream, since I couldn't remember most of the details of the events, and apparently there was a pretty long line to meet him. I don't remember that, but what I do remember though, was looking at this behemoth of an inflatable snowman towering over everyone to the point where it hit the tall ceiling, and his voice reverb. I don't remember what I asked for Christmas, Probably for a real espion as a pet or something. I don't know. I really liked Pokemon when I was a kid. <laughs> and I remember freaking out to my parents after about how huge that snowman was. Uh, I remember I thought he was some kind of Christmas god or something. <laughs> Now, the mall that Archie was featured in, uh, Chapel Hill Mall, was another Rolling Greens. It's basically dead at this point after 23 years of my life. It, yeah, that's... I, I was looking at a video recently of the almost empty mall and it's pretty depressing, but with the virus and online shopping becoming a prominent staple in our society, yeah, it kind of makes sense that malls in America would start to dwindle out during this time. 
I bring this up because I looked him up and apparently uh, they brought him back last year, but, you know, with uh, the mall that I go to kind of closing and with COVID, I doubt he's ever going to come back again this year. So, yeah, rest in peace, Chapel Hill. Uh, I hope they repurpose your land for something else. Another Christmas memory that kind of warms my heart is an event that happened during middle school in the 7th grade, and I'm gonna be honest, in my adolescence, nothing compared to the hell that was middle school. And, you know, that usually tends to happen when you're going through some emotional, hormonal shit in your body while you're surrounded by other teenagers. In my case, I was a year younger than everybody else in my grade. We're also going through some hormonal and emotional changes. On top of being relentlessly bullied, I also had to go through this strange period of time where my mom was going into third shift, or as some people call it, the graveyard shift, and my brother left home, and I wasn't getting along with my dad. To be frank, I was an angry kid who kept having hold back angry feelings towards many people, and it was a terrible time in my life, and if I'm being honest, I'm doing my best to spare as many details as possible. However, there was one good thing that happened to 12-year-old me, and it was this story. I remember one day before our winter break, I had to go to my locker during stay hall to grab something. What I found in my locker was one of the most bizarre moments of my life. It was a giant locker-sized bag. It was heavy, and it was tied together with a pretty red ribbon, and I closed my locker and opened it up again to see if I was just hallucinating. Uh, it was still there, and there was no note. There was no recipient, and I honestly thought it was a mistake, because who would even think to gift me whatever was inside? I took it out of my locker, went to my homeroom, and asked if I could report this to the main hall office, because I honestly thought that it was stuffed in my locker by mistake. I was excused, and then next thing you know, I'm traveling down to the counselor's office because I had a distinctive feeling that maybe it wasn't a mistake, but I just wanted to double check before I opened it. I knocked on the door to Miss... Mm, mm, let's call her Mrs. Angel for the sake of privacy. I knocked on her door, explained to her what happened, and she told me a story about how every year the elves in the school select one locker to place a gift in, and they just so happen to pick mine. Yeah, that was obviously bullshit, but I took it as, I placed this in your locker because I know you've been having a terrible year, both in your school and at home, and I care about you, and I want you to have a Merry Christmas. So I went back to my homeroom and finally opened up the heavy locker size sack. There was candy, just some new gloves, and some other cool shit I couldn't remember. Because it all happened over a decade ago, but it's an act of goodwill I'll never forget. And hey guys, Appreciate the teachers in your life who are willing to go above and beyond for their students. People like that deserve the best. Period. Alright, one last thing. I've been spending my past three Christmases hanging out with Manga Common alone in the winter, and while I find it to be a brief escape from my family, which I'm gonna be honest, I spend at least like 70 to 90% of my time throughout the year with, so I'm so much of a homebody that I get a little homesick. You know, sometimes I miss being around my family during this time. I'd be helping my Nona make cookies and decorate her very hallmarky Christmas house. Or I'd be helping my dad figure out a good gift for my mom, which is more often than not a big box of Lindor chocolate and maybe some jewelry or a stained glass lamp. I don't know, something like that. I guess uh, this is leaning towards the end of December, but one of my favorite things I used to do before I started coming down to where Common lives and way before the pandemic is that my biker family would always find themselves coming over, hanging out in the garage, and we'd drink as we'd watch the ball drop. And yes, under the supervision of my parents, when I was 18 to 20 years old, I'd drink. I kind of missed the Vanique and hanging out with my mom and aunts, listening to their stories about all the batshit, insane things they used to do when they were my age. And as for what Common and I do for Christmas, uh, most of our stories revolve around romantic implications of flying through the airport and spending time with each other. And if you saw the last video I made on him, then you probably know that we usually sit together and watch a movie at night. You know, all that fun jazz. But because we're weebs, we decided it would be funny to do KFC for Christmas. Kentucky Christmas! Is it healthy? No. 
but neither are all the cookies and candy and pretty much anything that is made during this season. Considering I only get KFC once a year, yeah, this is that time of year when I want to enjoy it. So anyways, that's all I've got for everyone, whether you're Zooming with your family this year for Christmas or just enjoying some Kentucky Fried Chicken. I just hope that everyone has a happy holiday and they're staying safe inside this year. And also, a happy holidays to my patrons, who are all listed here, with special shoutouts to Grim Baby and Kyle Christensen. Thank you all so much for watching, links in the description below, and be sure to share your holiday stories, and I hope to see you all again in 2021. Bye! Oh, <laughs> oh,